Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. Here we begin with live pictures from Sky 4, just hours to go before the parade gets underway. And now the rush is on to get everything in place for the big show. And now to the other big show tomorrow, live pictures from Ford Field. The Lions set to take on the Bears tomorrow and end a long stretch of Thanksgiving losses. All right, that means we are keeping, of course, a very close eye on the weather. Exact Track 40 radar clear right now, but that is expected to change overnight. The weather uh, didn't really get in the way of travel. We saw that. We wouldn't mind keeping it up now through the holiday. Isn't that the truth? Let's get kick things off with Brett Collar. He's in for Kim Adams tonight. Hi, Brett. Uh, cautiously optimistic okay. is the key <laughs> word here, right? Models have been trending a little bit drier and drier for us, and for uh, those of you that are going to go downtown tomorrow morning, that is good news. In the meantime, we've been kind of socked away in the cloud cover here today, and that's going to be the trend going forward. We'll even see some snowflakes out of these clouds soon enough. Low 40s across Metro Detroit. Winds are light. That's good news for the floats downtown here this evening and tomorrow as well. But the system that we're contending with is getting closer. You can see showers two hours south. It's going to be very close for us, folks. We're right on the fringe. Some of us may get a light rain snow mix tonight and tomorrow morning. Others will stay dry. That though all changes by Friday as snow is expected to return. But for the parade, the earlier you're down there, the better chance that you have to run into a drop or a flake or two. Not much, but there could be a couple, but we should start to see mostly cloudy skies as we get closer to the lunch hour on Thursday. But like I mentioned, snow is on the way. Could be a good dose for a few of us. We'll talk about that in just a bit. All right, Brett. So the countdown is on now to the start of America's Thanksgiving Parade presented by Gardner White tomorrow morning right here on Local 4. The floats are already starting to be put in place. <laughs> Let's take a look at live pictures from Sky 4 over the staging area. There's still a lot to do before it gets underway at 9 tomorrow morning, but let's get out to Will Jones. He's live there for us tonight. Hi, Will. Hi, Kimberly and Devin. This has been amazing to see. The artists have been putting their finishing touches on all of these floats. These floats are very detailed. They put a lot of work into them, and this has been a massive undertaking. And I spoke with the president and CEO of the parade company, Tony Michaels, about what it takes to pull this off year after year. America's Thanksgiving Parade is just shy of 100 years old. It's in its 98th year, and some families have been coming for generations. The setup is going on right now. The parade kicks off 845 Thanksgiving morning at Woodward and Kirby. The three-mile route goes to Woodward and Congress. Yeah, I'd be kidding if, if I said there wasn't anxiety, because there is. You want everything to be perfect. This is a great city, and we want to do things better than ever. We really do. How many people are you expecting downtown? Uh, there's going to be upwards of a million people down here tomorrow. It's going to be massive. There's going to be a lot to see and hear. The parade will feature more than two dozen floats, six of them new. You will also see balloons hovering in the air and marching bands. And then we have new floats this year. A new company is like uh, Hudson Weber Foundation this year is brand new. And that float is just going to melt the hearts of Detroiters. It really is with the huge Hudson building. Coming down to the parade will not cost you a penny. That's because it is free. But get here early so you can find a good spot to see the action. My favorite parts are the families and the kids and everybody who's here smiling. I mean, this is some the entertainment that some people, it's their whole year. Mm -hmm. And it means so much. I mean, this is the heart and soul, you know, of our city and our state. It's the parade. A lot of families are down here right now getting a sneak peek of these floats. Keep in mind, there will be even more road poachers tomorrow. Woodward at West Grand Boulevard will be closed all the way until Larnett Street from 5 a.m. to 4 p.m. That's for tomorrow. You can find more information on clickondetroit.com. But for right now, we're live in Midtown. Will Jones, Local 4. Okay, Will, we will check back in with you again at 6 o'clock. We appreciate it. Now, if you have ever wondered what it takes to drive one of those massive floats or just keep those big balloons uh, in line on the parade route, we're going to take you behind the scenes of America's Thanksgiving Parade presented by Gardner White tonight, 8 p.m. right here on Local 4. We're going to stream it for you as well on Local 4 Plus. Karen Drew goes to float school. She goes to band practice. She goes to the costume shop. We're all getting ready for the big show on Woodward on Thanksgiving morning. It takes a lot of people to pull it off, of course, and you'll see all of that tonight at 8 o'clock.
All right, now to the other big event tomorrow, just a few blocks away from where we'll be on Woodward Avenue. We are, of course, talking about the Lions yeah. taking on the Bears tomorrow afternoon, just after the parade. So let's get out to Shante Passmore. Fans hoping this isn't like Thanksgiving's past, Shante. Of course, Kimberly and Devin. Look, fans have no problem saying this right now. This year just feels different. We know Ford Field is going to be packed. Meanwhile, spots like Fanatic U, the sports apparel store, they are expecting business to be bananas. And tonight, many fans believe this is the year to break the Thanksgiving curse. A Thanksgiving tradition, much like the holiday travel or setting the bird on the table. It's showtime as the Detroit Lions host the Chicago Bears. Predictions, I'm going to say uh, 34 to 6. The gritty team is currently on a historic winning streak, the longest since 1934. But can the team break its winless Thanksgiving streak this year? Oh, yeah. No question, the Bears should really wish they weren't coming to town. We got to come to Kaki because it's our house. Ain't nobody going to come in our house and beat us. At Fanatic U. These right here are going really well. The jerseys up here. The sports apparel store anxiously awaits the match between the Lions and their NFC North rivals. I feel really good about it. I think they bring the, break the jinx and... Uh, I think the team is ready. Go Lions! This couple, who has no ties to Michigan, drive most years from North Carolina for the Thanksgiving face-off. This year, they believe they'll witness history in person. Dan Campbell's just got these guys so focused. Look at all the injuries we've had. Next man up, bam, they're doing their jobs. The Bears are in trouble. The stage is set. Now, it's go time. That is right. Of course, we know downtown Detroit is going to be hopping tomorrow, of course, between the parade and the game. And Fanatic, you tells me they're going to have their doors open at 7 o'clock to be ready to have merch to sell to the fans before the game. Of course, we know a lot of excitement ahead of the big game tomorrow. Live from downtown Detroit, Shante Passmore, Local 4. And I see you got your fit on and yeah. ready. I love it. You're looking good, Shante. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate it so much. Thank you. All right, so it's time to turn our attention to what's going to happen on the field. Everybody's pretty good at the talk part. I know that right? the truth. <laughs> <laughs> but let's, the Lions uh, and the Bears both. Short week of practice uh, before uh, joining up together tomorrow. Game kickoff at 12. 30 Candace Davis Price is in for Hobie tonight. The team remains heavy favorites here. They do, and that's a good point you made, Devin, about sports. It's a short week for both teams. Yeah, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. yeah. Especially when you got injuries you're dealing that's with, right? right. Yeah. 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 And that's right. The betters can get the Lions anywhere from nine to ten point favorites right now. And I'm no betting expert, but those numbers likely reflect how good the Lions have been this season, not in reflection of how they've been played in previous Thanksgivings. <laughs> yeah. This story all week long is how the Lions have not won on this great holiday since 2016. They welcome the Chicago Bears to Ford Field tomorrow, a team they often see on this day. The Bears have won three straight Thanksgiving games in Detroit, and Dan Campbell says his team wants to win, not just because of that streak, but they don't like to lose. Nobody likes losing. I don't, I don't want to lose, you know, so I don't want to lose a game. Uh, and I don't think any of us do, but it's, it's more so it's about... Uh, Man, a division opponent at home, the next one in front of us more so than don't want to, you know, lose a Thanksgiving game. I mean, we don't want to lose, period. So I think that's really more what this is. This is a big game, division opponent, and these carry a lot of weight. Now, the Lions haven't beaten the Bears on Thanksgiving since 2014, but as you heard Dan Campbell right there, now it's not about what game, day this game is being played on because this game is key when it comes to winning the division. It is, and let's get it done. We get want to back up yep. what those folks were saying. <laughs> and, and, yes. And Shante, <laughs> if not, they're going to so. be looking good in their merch. <laughs> There's no <laughs> doubt about go. that. We got that part covered. <laughs> All yeah. right. Thank you so much, Candace. All right. Well, some good news for Metro Detroit drivers. All lanes of eastbound and westbound I-696 have reopened to traffic between I-275 and Losser along with all on and off ramps too. barrels though will remain on the shoulder through the end of the year for additional work. There will also be a new I-696 project to rebuild the freeway from Losser to I-75 that will start in 2025 and will last for three years. More details will be released in early 2025. All right, in more news tonight, a Detroit police officer is on administrative leave after shooting 
two bystanders while firing at an armed suspect. This all unfolded during a block party on Detroit's west side back in June. Body cam video released by police shows this very chaotic scene. Police were called to the intersection of Florence and Trinity amid reports of a shootout. When officers arrived, they say more than 100 people were at the scene and four were shot. Our Erica Erickson is following the latest. Yeah, quite a chaotic scene. It's been hours of interviewing witnesses and going over some of that video, but it's ballistic reports that have that officer on administrative duty tonight. A chaotic scene on Trinity near Florence back in June. They're still shooting right now. I can hear it. Has a Detroit police officer on administrative duty losing her gun privileges. <laughs> It was two units there. It was a lot of folks, a lot of gunfire, and that, you know, on the side of the house, dark, you know, responding. Um, it, it was a it was a less than desirable situation. Officers responding to the large party, hundreds of people gathered. 911 calls coming in of shots fired. 93 shell casings found at the scene. Eastbound between the houses with an AR. <laughs> We got multiple shot. Interim Police Chief Todd Bettison says the officer fired five rounds, hitting one of the armed men, but we're told she also hit two people unintentionally, both in their 20s. Send an EMS. They're both okay. The officer on the force for eight years telling her superiors she was fearing for her life. Right now, no arrests, the investigation ongoing. Whether they were shot unintentionally or intentionally, you know, it's, it's a not, not a good day when an officer has to use force like that. But when it's unintentional and you're there to serve and protect, um, I can't even imagine how the officer is feeling. And so it's, it, it's, it's not a good thing. Interim Police Chief Todd Bettison went on to say, just like any officer involved shooting, an independent investigation is being conducted and that warrant will be sent over to the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office when it is ready. Reporting live right outside Detroit Police Headquarters, Erica Erickson, back to you. And we'll be on it then. All right, Eric.